Okay, boys, we are back once again with our NHL 23 franchise mode. If you missed out on the last one, I don't blame you because it was a doozy. We are currently seated. Where are we in the entire league? I actually do want to check this out real quick, but it was not a great episode. We signed Damien Pascal. Uh, why don't I just reverse search? We signed Damien Pascal to a one-year, $5 million deal. That does not seem to be working out in our favor, though, because we are, like, fifth worst in the sixth worst in the entire league um we're letting in 3.5 goals for per game but we can shoot the puck that's for sure we can definitely score but our defense is just not there whatsoever so it's really really rough to see in the last one i asked you guys what i should do to change it and uh, divinity as always had a good comment for me uh to change the lines to look like this halton and stutzla pascal on the first line uh, Debrinket, Malkin, and Kachuk on the second. Uh, third line being um, Berkeley Cat and Drake Batherson and Walker Reimer. So appreciate the insights as always, Divinity. He also le left a little bit more of another comment to just say fourth line, whatever you see fit. And um, to focus more on production rather than chemistry. If you guys remember the last one, we had basically plus, plus fives. Um, in the top three pairs, it was something like this, right? Something something like along these lines. We had a, we had a plus five in the top three um, uh, offensive pairs, and so, but that wasn't really working out for us. We're like worse than the NHL. So um, I went ahead and switched the lines accordingly, and we're gonna see if these can do anything else for us. On defense, the lines look like Shabbat, Sanderson, Rasmus Anderson, Lassie Thompson, Jake Clemenson, Jacob Bernard Docker. I think we might have signed Jake Clemenson a little early because he's minus nine with only seven points. Um, but other than that, I mean, the guys, they're doing their thing. Most of them are plus, other than the, the, the bottom pair is pretty negative, and Thomas Shabbat's a bit negative. But I think our real problem is between the pipes here. Hugo Allenfeld has an 8.89 save percentage and 3.26 goals against average, and Mad Sogard has an 8.77 save percentage and 3.72, which they are just unacceptable numbers from a goalie, man. Just absolutely unacceptable. I get that he doesn't have world-class defense in front of him, but... I mean, we should still be able to keep the puck out a little bit with an 84 in there, you know, at least at at least a 900 save percentage is what I'm shooting for. But in this episode, we will probably finish the season because I don't know if we're going to make the playoffs. I know it's been a while since we made the playoffs, boys, but uh, this is the trial and error of being a GM in the National Hockey League. Let's go watch buffalo and get this simulation underway here that's a loss to chicago finally we get a win what kind of a losing streak did we just go on man i'll check it out we just went on a where's our last win here so it's a one two three four four game losing streak and then we win against tampa and then we lose to them as well i gotta go to the scouting but i will be right back okay all that taken care of let's go watch the buffalo game here we are in buffalo so i'm not gonna get that whole mice advantage but what are you gonna do first period down two to one patrick Laine and jeff skinner score but alex to bring it answers back in our favor down two to one second period <sighs> up four to two let's go walk a rhymer with two goals damian pass on that first line with a goal as well let's get through this third period now boys come on do not crumble i need uh hugo allenfeld to play well we also take a lot of penalties i've noticed man i feel like every time we're in the simulation there's another one i feel like every time we're in the simulation we take like multiple penalties and it's kind of annoying but also ottawa's a pretty physical team so it's uh i guess it's kind of realistic i mean ottawa takes quite a few penalties we end up winning that game four to three though Let's look at the three stars. Uh, Walker Reimer with two goals. it with a goal and an assist. And their backup goalie came in and made 12 saves. Congratulations to him. Perhaps their starter got injured or something. I don't know. Let's simulate down to... Let's see. Maybe like the Toronto game. Battle of Ontario kind of. <sighs> Man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the season's going to go. That's two in a row. That's three in a row. Okay, boys. Okay, are we turning it on here uh, about halfway through the season? I don't know. Uh, lost six to four, lost five to two. Okay, why do I even talk? I do not know. Colorado now. We lose to them five to this time. A fourth and a fifth in Oliver Ekman Larson. No, thank you. 
we might have to fire our coach as well, man, because this season has been disastrous. That's a win against Florida. That's a win against Arizona. That's a win against the Ducks. We're on a three-game winning streak now. It's not going to do anything for our position, though. Still last in the Atlantic by quite some uh, time, or by by quite a wide margin. I think our, our, we're in the toughest division as well. Um, I think, yeah, we're in a pretty rough division, to be honest. But we're also not playing well. So what do you expect? We have a losing record. Um, we're below NHL 500. That's pretty hard to do, to be honest. So what are you going to do? Walk Reimer scores another goal in the simulation here. So that's pretty cool. Second period underway. <sighs> down 5-2 oh my goodness dude down 6-2 yikes we are just getting laughed out in in uh, in this building right now i think are we in toronto or are we in the ctc i hope we're not in the ctc man that would be disastrous dude seven to three okay let's just get out of there boy oh boy this team is rough and i don't really know why like if you just look at our overalls i know overalls not everything but if you look at our overalls, we should be a fairly decent team, man. Like, I don't really understand why we are performing so poorly. It doesn't it doesn't really make any sense to me, um, to be honest. That was a trade for Tarasenko, who's on Detroit. That's really funny, actually, because Tarasenko is on Ottawa and Debrinkit is on Detroit in real life. So that's a pretty funny trade, actually, not going to lie. Uh, Seattle lost and then win against St. Louis. At this point, we just want to tank and lose as many games as possible. Um, so I'm going to make some trades here at the trade deadline. And let's see um, what I can come up with. Okay, so Connor Brown is a guy who we kind of took a chance on in free agency. He didn't play any games for us this year. But, you know, in the past three years, he's played 82 games. But he's been a minus every single year. Hasn't really helped with the team very much. So I'm okay with saying goodbye to him. Um, he played for us. How how many seasons has he played for Ottawa now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's played seven seasons of his career in Ottawa and hasn't had anything to show for it. So go over to Minnesota, who is probably going to win the uh, um, the cup or at least the President's Trophy. They are 44, 13, and 3, which is absolutely absurd. Here with uh, I, like Austin Matthews and Kirill Kaprizov, like their team is just so stacked. Yeah, Matthews, Kaprizov, uh, Erickson Eck, Marco Rossi, Jonas Brodin, Matthew Boldy. They have a pretty good team. So, Connor Brown, thank you for your service. I don't know if this will go through. Rejected, and no, it will not. So, let's get, like, I don't know, a sixth round pick or something next year as well. We have decent picks this year, but uh, next year is lacking a little. A third and a sixth, what do you say? Not sufficient at all. A third and a seventh. Uh, they were offering me a trade. I was just trying to spice it up a little bit. Rejected. Okay. Who was the guy you were offering to me then? I think it was this guy down here. Let's just do it. Uh, there we go. They accept our trade offer. Connor Brown, a guy who was not getting any playing time with us, so no reason to keep him around. And I do have another trade on the docket for some more picks and prospects as well. Okay, so we have another trade for Malkin. He's doing all right here in Ottawa. He has 45 points in 60 games. Uh, a bit off of his pace the last year in Pittsburgh, but he's also on a worse team, so what do you really expect? I'm trying to get a second round pick and then just some uh, some draft picks out of it. I had to retain some salary, but he only has a contract for one more year, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I don't know if this will go through, but I'm just going to try it out. Rejected, not sufficient at all. Okay, take the fifth out, and now it's accepted. Okay, so Malkin goes to Philadelphia. And Connor Brown goes to the Minnesota Wild. So let me go do these lines and uh, show you how the team is looking. Okay, guys, after those trades, this is what the team is looking like. We have a Halton and Stutzla Pascal, Brady Kachuk, Drake Batherson, Alex Debrinkit, Berkeley Cat, and Ruslan Zadorov, Walker Reimer, and then Matthew Joseph, Yakov Trenin, and Tyler Boucher. With Anthony Beauvillier still scratched, I know <clears throat> we have no... We only have Berkeley Catton, who's the only player under 81 on the roster, and yet the team is one of the worst in the NHL. It doesn't make sense to me. On defense here, I switched to the lines just a little bit because Jay Clemenson is now minus 16, and that just can't be the case. So Shabbat with Sanderson, Thompson, Bernard Docker, Clemenson, Rasmus Anderson, and goalies still horrible as ever, man. Still horrible as ever. So let's 
get simulating here. I don't think I'm going to go into the trade deadline this year just because there's no need for us to. I'll look at the, the rosters and stuff afterwards and show you guys any meaningful trades, but uh, there's really no reason for me to get into the trade deadline. Um, we made our trades, so let's just continue simulating here. And uh, I hope it shows me the screen. I think it should show it to me. Um, I guess it does not, so I will have to go here and look at the trades. Yes, the trades. Here we go. Okay, let me look at this. All right, so we have a trade here. Vancouver picks up Mackenzie Blackwood from Edmonton Exchange for Silverberg, a third and a fourth. Uh, down here, Vegas gets Alex Tuck back for a second and a third from Nashville. Uh, Montreal picks up Ethan Bear for a second and a prospect, it looks like. Arizona picks up Connor Murphy for Patrick Hornfist. Okay. Um, oh, Nashville trades a first round pick to, or gets a first round pick from Colorado in exchange for Vitek Vanacek and Akil Thomas. So Colorado loading up as well as they usually do here. Um, Andre Kuzmenko and Alex Formanton on their way to Anaheim. Calgary gets, I, I'm going to assume those are two prospects. Um, Ilya Mikheyev goes to Winnipeg. Arizona gets a second round pick for it. Uh, Travis Sanheim, excuse me, and Nikita Zadorov go to Minnesota. So Minnesota still stacking up there. Arizona gets a first and a second for Travis Sanheim and Nikita Zadorov. Wow. Pretty crazy return. Um, Trevor Moore goes from Calgary to, or sorry, from Carolina to Toronto. And, Tor or, and Carolina gets a first for Trevor Moore. That's crazy. Brett Pesci and Victor Mete to Seattle. Um, Arizona gets Vladimir Voloshenko and Cody Begris. Must be nice. Probably some picks right there. Vegas get a first for Petrangelo and William Carlson. Crazy, crazy stuff. Toronto gets Phil Dano and Jan Ruda in exchange for a third round pick. Um, Cam Atkinson and some other people in exchange for San, San Jose gets Patrice Bergeron and Drew Doughty. Oh my god, so San Jose, Patrice Bergeron, Drew Doughty, and then those are our trades down there. Patrice Bergeron and Drew Doughty go to San Jose. Uh, Toronto gets uh, Philippe Dano. Um, Vegas gets a first. Like, this This is pretty crazy. Seattle gets Brett Pesci, who was a former Ottawa senator. Um, Vitek Vanacek and Akil Thomas to Colorado. Connor Murphy to Arizona. Yeah, some pretty crazy stuff. Alex Tuck to Vegas. Mackenzie Blackwood to Vancouver. And that's about the trade deadline, guys. Now, though, it's time to simulate as far as we can because we want this season behind us. We can go and see some teams. Let's go see Nashville. We, we've made some trades with them in the past. Um, you know, we can go see our good buddy Joshua Norris. And of course, now we're winning games. That is just classic EA Sports right there. Let's go see Josh Norris and the boys. First period underway at 0 0. Second period now, still 0 0. A defensive one, a rare defensive game from the Ottawa Senators here. Um, of course, though, we take two penalties as soon as I start the real time sim, which you love to see. Um, shots even here another penalty for the sense I mean have we gotten a single power play when I've when I've been uh, simulating like minute by minute I don't think so and this one's gonna end 0-0 and overtime still 0-0 so both goalies get a shutout and we win in shootout love to see it Samsonov was doing his best in between the pipes there both goalies are in a shutout so congratulations to them and now let's go and see Let's probably go see Minnesota. No, we can't see Minnesota. Who else did I trade to? Dallas? Was it Dallas? Hang on a second. All right, so we traded to Philadelphia and Minnesota. Do we play either of those teams? No, we do not. So let's just go watch. Let's go watch Detroit, man. They were the Stanley Cup champions uh, a couple years ago. So let's go see if we can make some ruckus in their building. And, of course, now we're getting points. Okay, there, there's two in a row. There's three losses in a row, uh, four in a row. Yeah, just keep losing, boys. I don't even care. We have 71 points, which would be good for, like, I guess six is not great, but 71 points. Yeah, 71 points is horrible. What am I saying? Why am I trying to like justify this season, dude? We're 32 and 32. I mean, I guess we're 500, but it's still not a good record. 2-1 in the first period for us. Tarasenko gets one on Alnfeld, but Alex Dabrinkin and Jacob Bernard Docker both answer on Alexander Georgiev. Second period now, still 2-1. to one. 
And it seems like when we go into the real-time sim here, we're maybe a more defensive team. Watch, here come the penalties in our... Oh, what? In our favor this time. Wow, I was going to say, here come the penalties in Detroit's favor, but not this time. But they tie it up nonetheless on Eagle Allenfeld. Shots 32 to 23 cents outplaying Detroit. But all that matters is those are those big numbers there on the top of the scoreboard. We're going to go to overtime yet again. And we're going to go to shootout yet again, actually. Here we go. And we win in a shootout. Walker Reimer is going to score on Georgiev to give us a 3-2 victory over them. Hugo Elmfeldt makes 24 saves, Georgiev makes 37, and Gillis scores a goal and gets a hit. Congratulations to him, but we win that game, so that's all that matters. Although, I do kind of want to lose games, um, but either way. Alright, so let's continue down here. Let's just go to, you know what? Let's go see Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Why not? Always a fun matchup to go watch one of the best do it. That's two losses in a row. That's three in a row. Then a win. Okay. We have 76 points. Hold up. I mean, we're only six. I know. That, that would be crazy, dude. The Panthers would have to, like, lose every game. Um, and we would have to, like, win a lot of them. So that's not going to happen. But I was, I just got a little curious there, man. A little curious. No, no, no. We can't, we can't make the playoffs. Um, we're going up against Pittsburgh here. Uh, let's see what happens. I just want to get some gameplay in for you. Well, not gameplay, but, you know, go, go see the real-time sim. 2 to nothing for the Sens. Shabbat and Ruslan Zadorov. Hopefully he's turning his season around because he had a horrible start to the year. Second period now. 4 to nothing for the Senators. Kasper Holtonen and Alex Debrinkit. So the boys are shooting and the defense is defending as well. And great commentary from myself there. We're about halfway through this third period. Score remains, I was going to say remains the same, but it does not because Drake Batherson puts one behind Martin Jones to give the Senators a 5 to nothing lead. A barn burner against the Pittsburgh Penguins, who I think are actually a pretty decent... No, are you kidding me? Oh, I think actually a pretty decent team um this year but shane gosh just very scores on hugo allenfeld to break his shutout usually i'm not afraid to say the word shutout but in ea land you never know so five to one win there over pittsburgh are yeah pittsburgh is are they one of the best teams in the, i guess they're kind of one of the best teams in the league but nobody's touching the minnesota wild let me tell you that uh, let's just go to the last game of the season. It's up against Nashville. What better way to end it? Can we go on a run here late? Um, no, we cannot. We are we have 80 points, which is never going to be good enough to get you into the playoffs. We will look at the league leaders and all that stuff after this game, but up against Nashville, who are a horrible team, by the way. First period, we're up 2 to nothing. Walker Reimer and Alex to bring it. Love to see it. Second period now. 2-1 still in our favor. Of course, Josh Norris is going to score against his old team. Here comes Anthony Duclair as well, but then Kasper Haltonen answers right back on Ilya Samsonov. Last time these two teams saw each other, it was a one to nothing shootout. So uh, definitely changing the game here. 4-3 to three now. Ruslan Zadorov scores on the power play for Ottawa. Five minutes left in this one. Then Tyler Benson's going to score shorthanded because of course he will. A long power play for Ottawa. We can't capitalize on it, and we are going to over overtime these two teams very evenly matched not in a good way though because they're both at the bottom of the league standings overtime solves nothing we're going to shoot out once again and we win in a shootout Drake Batherson at least that's something we can say man it seems like our shootout uh, always comes through love wrestling's adorable with two points you have Kim Kellum Joachim Kemo with two points and Anthony Duclair as well Ah, big, big game. Well, not a big game at all, actually. It means literally nothing. Let's go see as everybody played 82 games. Yes, they have. So now we can look at the team leaders, the league leaders, and all that jazz. Alex Dabrinkit here is our leader on the team with 77 points. Finally puts up a pretty respectable season. He had 36 goals as well. His most as a senator? Yes, yes, his most as a senator. So... Good stuff there. I mean, he's he's been he's been a very consistent player for us. I know I was, uh, you know, talking bad about him a little bit, but he's been a pretty consistent player for us. 77 points and 36 goals. Nothing to scoff at. Very, very well deserved for Alex to bring it there. 
Uh, then it's Brady Kachuk, who also had a turnaround season as well, I think. He, yeah, kind of. He, after that 45-point performance, he definitely turned it back around with 63 and 69, respectively. 84 penalty minutes, as we like to see Tim Stutzla on that for, centering that first line with 67 points. Only 20 goals, which I think is a bit lower than last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About 9 lower than last year, but still more assists. His career high in assists? Yes, it is. So career high in assists, maybe not in points, but um, still a respectable year. 67 points, nothing too bad. I'd love to see a little bit more point per game, maybe, but you can't ask for everything around here. Uh, Drake Batherson continuing to impress quite a, a decent amount with 61 points. Yikes, though. Two big gambles we took. Well, I guess Casper Haltonen is a homegrown talent. Uh, with five-star shooting, only scored 18 goals here. And uh, Damian Pascal, who we signed to a one-year deal worth $5 million, only with 45 points, a minus 12 and minus 16 as well. So not amazing stuff you like to see. I'd rather have a guy like Walker Reimer, who only scores 36 points, but with, um, you know, only a minus five, you know. It's, it's they're kind of interchangeable here. Uh, Matthew Joseph actually had a good season, only averaging nine minutes a night, but scores 30 points. That's pretty good. That's pretty dang good. Berkeley Catton is here as well. He had 29 points, a worse season than Walker Reimer, but still not a bad rookie season. I mean, he was on a horrible team, so what do you really expect? And Ruslan Zadorov actually turned it around as well here. He I remember he started the season. He had like 10 or 11 games played with like zero points so he actually played pretty okay towards the end which i'm very happy to see uh yakov Trinin as well also played pretty decently here 20 points in 62 games for a fourth line center i will not be mad at that and then tyler boucher has been quite the bust in the franchise mode but with 96 stick checking he can get it done defensively at least he's a zero on a bad team Looking at defense now, it's Thomas Shabbat who goes, uh, who has 52 points. He scored 15 goals with 37 assists. That's pretty good stuff. Then it's Jake Sanderson with 38 points. Is that his career high? I believe so. Yes, it is by quite a while too. So a great season from Jake Sanderson. Rasmus Anderson with 33 points is not bad either. Uh, Jacob Bernard Docker, a minus 16 is pretty rough. And Lassie Thompson at 17 points. Pretty good in his rookie season, I think. Um, yeah, that's not bad at all. 17 points. Um, Jake Clemson with 15 points, but a minus 11 is pretty rough as well. He had a, a rough time in his rookie year. Uh, goaltenders now, pff, just absolutely disgusted. I don't even want to look at these numbers, dude. You can see them. They're horrible for both goalies. This is just, it's just pitiful stuff. Wait, I have to go check the league leaders now. So let's do that. We can see who won the individual awards. I always forget what the, what the awards are. So is points the Ted Lindsay? Or is that like the heart? Or I, I don't remember the Art Ross. I don't know. I know that the uh, Rocket Richard is the goals one, and that's the one that matters the most, right? But Kirill Kaprizov leads the league in points here, followed by his center in Austin Matthews, then Connor McDavid on Edmonton, Nathan McKinnon on the Avs, Sidney Crosby in Pittsburgh. Uh, this guy's 39, and he's still getting 92 points in 82 games. I mean, just crazy stuff. Maybe it's because he's alongside Miko Rantanen. Who knows? Nick Suzuki also always simulates so well, man. I always say it, but he's always up here. 14 goals, but 76 assists. Crazy stuff. Jason Robertson, Nikita Kucherov. Um, we'll just go and look at all the guys in the uh, who are above point per game here. Mitch Marner only with 82 points. That's kind of rough. G. Gensel with 82, and then Matthew Barza with 80. So. Congratulations, there were three people in the NHL who broke 100 points. Looking at goal leaders, it's Nathan McKinnon and Wade Harding, who was drafted two years ago? No, this is his first year. In his rookie season, he is up for a potential, or he, he um, ties the rocket with uh, Nathan McKinnon. That's crazy. I don't know if there's a tiebreaker for it, if it just goes to both of them. Is a tiebreaker who scored more points. Wade Harding up here pure 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 shooter dude he had 363 shots and he only had 15 assists for 68 points great rookie year uh speaking of it actually no let's go to defenseman first and of course camel car is going to win the north i think brant clark has uh had quite a few points as well in this uh, simulation but camel car wins it this year with 80 points in 82 games uh, the rest of the boys down here as well, Brent Clark, Adam Fox, Adam Boakfist, Rasmus Dahlin, Quinn Hughes, Miro Heiskanen, all these guys down here 
having great seasons. And where's Thomas Shabbat? Eric Brandstrom, of course, puts up 54 points in 82 games. It's a crazy year, but we couldn't sign him to uh, six years by $10 million. We just don't have that kind of money, so... Not too worried about a Jake Chikrin, who is a real-life senator, has a good season as well. And there's Thomas Shabbat down there. Looking at goalies now, you know who's not going to be up here? Freaking Hugo Allenfeld and the gang. But Jesper Wallstedt will, who it looks like Minnesota has cleaned up on the awards. He has a 916 save percentage and a 2.52 goals against average. Those are really, really good numbers in EA land. For sure, Jake Ottinger as well. Anthony Stolarz, who is a 82 overall, getting a 915 save percentage. Yep. That's the EA simulation for you. Now let's go to rookie skaters, and it's going to be Wade Harding for sure. With 50 goals, yeah, you're winning the Calder 100%. He had the most points. He had a decent plus-minus. He uh, he kind of takes a lot of penalties, though, and a crazy amount of shots. You're definitely getting the Calder, my friend. Looking at goalies, unless there's any crazy goalies. No, I don't think so. Yeah, the Calder definitely going to Wade Harding here. A great sniper, um, 53 goals in your rookie season is absolutely crazy. So I think that's everything that we had to look at. Oh, no, no. Let's look at the teams and look at where we rank. We can also do the draft lottery in this video. Why not? In the entire NHL, we are... I'll scroll down for this one, although it will lag because I'm recording, which you love to see. Okay, let's go. We're 20, 23. So we have Philadelphia's pick as well. So we have the what is that like the 10th pick or something so philadelphia's pick is ours and we have the 26th overall pick as well okay so that means we are so this is pick one new jersey picks first overall uh second overall third fourth fifth sixth we have the seventh overall pick and the 10th overall pick so we pick at 7 and 10 as long as we don't move in the draft lottery which is not bad at all we should be getting some respectable players there but we might uh, be packaging a deal to be honest I don't know I don't know if Damian Pascal is going to stick around something that you guys will have to chime in on for sure um, oh I didn't even I didn't even mention who was like first in the league stuff like that what am I doing bro so Minnesota obviously wins the president's trophy they are just a force to be reckoned with then it's Buffalo, then it's Toronto, Dallas, Colorado. So a lot of Western Conference teams, actually. I think it might be split 5-5 five and five in the or 4-4 four four in the top eight. Yeah, it is. So that's pretty cool. The East and the West may be equally competitive this year, which is pretty uh, cool. You'll have to see it. So those are what the um, team sets look like and the player stats. So with all that being out of the way, we can simulate... Uh, Basically to the end of the year, certainly to the draft pretty much. Um, I have to just do the scouting real quick, but I will see you guys when we either have Stanley Cup champion or when the draft lottery shows up. And the playoffs have completed and it looks like the Toronto Maple Leafs, they got it done without Austin Matthews, but with Mitch Marner and the gang, they got it done. And they are the 2027 Stanley Cup champion. So congratulations to them. Um, now I will simulate to the draft here. We will look at the, um, uh, the draft lottery will show up here pretty soon. So let's take a look at that. And so Vegas moves up, which is bad for us. Edmonton is second. Uh, we move down one spot to eight and we also move down from uh, philadelphia's pick to 11. So a, a rough, a rough, 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 um, look at it here. Uh, we moved down in both spots, so we're drafting at number 8 and number 11 instead of at number 7 and number 10. So, not the best thing in the world, not going to lie. But let's get the draft day. Oh, first of all, let's view the retired players. Did Malkin call it a career? Other stuff that happened in the league? <sighs> Alexander Ovechkin goes out at the age of 41. He's still at 85 overall. And uh, these career numbers just crazy. He ends with 993 goals, seven shy of a thousand goals, but an incredible career to say the least. 1800 points. Uh, uh, next up on the docket is Patrice Bergeron, who just retired a few days ago, actually. So, uh, congratulations on a great career here in the simulation as well as real life. He ends up with 1200 points. Blake Wheeler is here as well at the age of 40. It seems like all these guys ending at 40. Ryan O'Reilly here 
Only 36 years old, though, so what do I know? 1,008 points, ends his career with St. Louis. Uh, David Krejci as well retires. Jamie Benn is here at 37 years old. 72 overall, yikes. Roman Yossi calls it quits. Uh, um, Josh Bailey, Kyle Lacpozo, Alex Kalorn, Chris Kreider, Jonathan Marsha. So, all right, so... Uh, some legends, Mike Hoffman, the uh, uh, an Ottawa Senator legend here in like 2017. Yeah, he had a great, he had a good season here at 2016-17 when we made the playoffs, tried to make our run, but then Pittsburgh beat us in double overtime game seven. I'll never forget that. Uh, Dad in office here as well, <laughs> the absolute legend. What about goaltenders now? <sighs> Marc Andre Fleury, he retires in Laval, so he actually retires in Montreal. Had an 80 overall, he had a 922 save percentage. Crazy stuff. Uh, Jonathan Quick here also retires. Um, Yaroslav Halak, Simeon Varlamov, an absolute a legendary a goalie, goalie retiree class as well. Darcy Kemper, Martin Jones was good for a hot second. James Reimer, oh my goodness, dude. What a what a class. Pelo Francois, uh, Louis Domain, Casey DeSmith, some Penguins goaltenders, Michael Hutchinson, Michael Hauser. Um, and the legend Christopher Gibson as well. So pretty, pretty stacked uh, retirement class, to be honest. We have Alexander Ovechkin, Bergeron, Ryan O'Reilly, Blake Wheeler, Marc Andre Fleury. Um, what about, yeah, what about defensemen here? Alex Edler goes out. Ryan McDonough, Jeff Petrie. Okay, so pretty cool. And then uh, you know Marc Andre Fleury, Jonathan Quick, Yaroslav Halak, and Varlamov. I mean, all just crazy, crazy, crazy talents. Uh, all going out, so congratulations on great careers to all of them. Mark andre Fleur, look at that, on the far right, ends with 28 points as well. Jonathan Quick scored a goal. I don't know if he's done that in real life, but uh, um, or if that was in the simulation. Um, forgive me on my ignorance there, but uh, either way, Jonathan Quick ends with a goal. Mark andre Fleur ends with 28 points, which I think is pretty funny. Also, pretty good career numbers from both of them. But that is it for the retirement class. Why did it take me to the middle of the regular season? I don't know. Uh, this game is so glitched. It took me to November of 2016 when we're in June of 2027. Sure. Or, sorry, of 2026 on 2016. My apologies. There, there we go. We're on draft day now. So I will show you guys the draft. Remember, we pick at number 8 and number 11. So any uh, suggestions you guys have will definitely help out. All forwards um, here in the top five on medium elite forwards. We have a playmaker, a sniper, two-way forward, two-way forward, and sniper. So, I don't know. We have snipers on the team. We don't have a big two-way forward, though. So, maybe if we want to trade up, it's going to be one of these guys. Maybe we want an additional sniper. I don't know. So, we pick at number eight. Number eight, apparently Wes Klimi is supposed to go. He is two years away, similar to Sergei Gonchar. With one T and puck on a string, I would assume you have one T if you're similar to Sergey Gonchar. But who else do we have? A lot of defensemen here around number eight. This guy's NHL ready with no contest, but we just picked up Jake Clemenson. Do we really need somebody like this? A plus physical, uh, B defense. Okay, not not bad at all. This guy also NHL ready left defenseman with wheels and snipe two A D. He has better numbers for sure. He's like A's everywhere. Um, this guy has some Bs. Okay. Wes Clemmy, who we just looked at, is two years away. Interesting stuff. Then Albert Brathwaite. Uh, he's three years away with no X-Factor, so probably not going to be Brathwaite here. Uh, Connor Barry, three years away with some X-Factors. Okay. Something to look at. Center two-way forward as well. Then picking at number 11 here is Sean Sharma. Uh, decent production in the OHL three years away medium top six forward with ankle breaker K okay, not bad um and then these guys here this guy's NHL ready with ooh a lot of x-factors as a sniper with a plus shooting okay Kirill Shirakov could be our pick at number 11 perhaps um this guy's NHL ready defenseman with gold stick him up most likely that's pretty cool at 17 years old as well maybe this guy's our pick so I'll, I'll mark both of these guys for us um Emiliano Donald all alone and it's tricky NHL ready as well that could be that could be interesting but I don't really know 
Um, medium elite player here. Wow, medium elite gem three years away. Interesting. With send it, bouncer, quick pick, and back out. Yeah, this could be our pick as well. On the He could play on the right side too. Does he have, is he pinch? Yeah, he cycle pinch as well, so that's good. Similar to Matthias Ekomo we had. And then these guys down here, I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up any of them. Maybe a low, a low elite player? With off the rush snipe, close quarters, shock and awe, make it snappy seeing eye. Oh my goodness, dude. We got to try to get number 29 as well. So, pretty cool, man. There's a lot of a lot of uh, X-Factor type players. I'm just going to go through the list and see who else I should ping. All right, so that looks like it is it. I want you, I have a question for you guys. Question of the day, if you will, is who do we go after in the draft? Do we try to pick up uh, uh, one of these top five players straight up? Maybe Damien Pascal and a first for one of them. Or maybe Damien Pascal straight up. I don't know. I try to get some homegrown talent. Or do we try to re-sign Damien Pascal as well? I'll show you guys what he wants. He wants, uh, let's view the contracts here. Uh, where is he? Damien Pascal. He dropped to an 87 overall. He wants two years, 7.275 mil. Not totally unrealistic, um, but let me know what you guys think about that type of extension for him. If you will, we go further, he wants a lot more money, um, but two years, 7 mil is not a bad deal, I don't think, for Damien Pascal. Other than that, uh, nobody else we really have to re-sign here. Goaltending-wise, though, we have to re-sign both of these guys. But honestly, Hugo Allenfeld, I'm not signing you for Jack. So you can get out of here. And Mad Sogard, you know what? I mean, you played horrible for us, to be quite frank. But uh, $1 million won't be crazy for me, so I'll probably sign him. Um, but without further ado, guys, that was this episode. Kind of a meaningless one. Toronto wins that Stanley Cup. Um, but yeah, if you like to give it a like, comment if you're new, subscribe, all that stuff. Let me know what you guys, who you guys think I should pick up. Let me know if you think we should re-sign Damien Pascal as well. Um, but that's been it for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and peace out everybody.